this is the Turning Points USA um, America Fest. America Fest. This thing is the gift that keeps on giving. It's a special panel. It's uh, Charlie Kirk, James Lindsay, Tim Pool, and Steve Bannon all together. Oh, oh. all right. So, talk about uh, nightmare yeah. blunt rotation. How do I keep getting surrounded by anti Semites? <laughs> Anyways, here is uh, Charlie uh, Kirk interviewing Tim Pool about um, uh, wokeness. About wokeness and about Occupy Wall Street. Both seeing the symptoms of this sugar high money cycle of fewer and fewer people getting really rich. Bernie came at it from an outright Marxist view. Trump came at it from a populist nationalist view. And Bernie Sanders should have really been the nominee in 2016, but Hillary Clinton rigged the game. Trump became the nominee and obviously won in a shocking fashion. What we are now living through 14 years later is the economic catastrophe of Timothy Geithner and Ben Bernanke and Hank Paulson. But here's the thing, and this is why James Lindsay's work is so incredible. The these corporations think they are immune to criticism and revolution because they have wokeness as a shield. They have an iron dome. They think they are protected from criticism. Pause it for one second. Uh, what's, what's interesting about this, honestly, I mean, and in, 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 in genuinely interesting and relevant going forward, is Kirk is adopting Bannon's uh, construction yes. here of a right-wing populism that, of course, you know, Trump ran on partly, you know, to a certain extent, which all, and, and, and we just went through this with a great explanation uh, the other day of, of the difference between a right wing populism and a left wing populism and the right wing populism, the, the left wing populism, it is, for lack of a better term, 99 percent against the one percent that the. Um, and, and, it, and it inherently talks about like the oligarch and the plutonomy and uh, the, the plutocracy. Whereas right wing populism blames both the elite on one hand and then the marginalized on the other. It's the immigrants. It's the trans uh, people. It's uh, the black people. It's the brown people and the elite. But their critique of the elite is really a way only to bring more people to their side. There's no, I think, uh, well, honesty in it. The proof There's is no in the pudding. I mean, we didn't see anything by Trump to deal with that. But no, but they just, but they know that critique of corporate power and of moneyed interests is what is necessary to appeal to people in mass. And so all they do is just assign wokeness and to it. And that is uh, beyond what Tim's going to say about wokeness. That is a legacy of Occupy Wall Street. Well, yes, yes. And, and But to be clear here, when they say they're using a cloak of, of, of wokeness, that is how they, they are positioning themselves in the middle of their populism. I mean, put aside the, 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 the disingenuousness of it one way or another. That's a largely irrelevant because they cannot, they cannot, they're not putting uh, the elite. It is not a, it is not a binary. The, they are fighting the elite and they're fighting the, the immigrant the the brown person, the, the black the person, the, okay. the the trans person, and 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 they combine that critique by saying yes that the elite are using those people as some type of shield. And Tucker does this. That's too, what wokeness right? means. Yes. And and so this is important because um, this is the way that uh, Tim uh, Poole is going to claim that Occupy was uh, corrupted. Because remember, Occupy started out, it's the 1%. We're against the 1%, the 99% against the 1%. And uh, so continue. This is important because this is Bannon's line and this has been pushed around internationally. And we're going to see a return to it because Bannon is going to be advising Trump. There's, uh, he is now, he's going to be doing it more. Corporations think they are immune to criticism and revolution because they have wokeness as a shield. They have an iron dome. They think they are protected from criticism because they can say men can become pregnant, white people are evil. Wokeism is the only thing they have left protecting them from hundreds of millions of people realizing that they're robber barons against the civilization. The first time I encountered the wokeness, whatever, Occupy Wall Street. Initially, you know, I'm down there. 
and I'm sure Luke has similar experiences. There's a lot of people who are just economic populists. They say, I don't know, the two parties are bad, whatever. But then all of a sudden, these, these organizers started gaining more and more traction who believed in the progressive stack and white men are evil. There's a good comic that embodies this, and it's a rich guy in a big chair with protesters outside saying, we are the 99%, and he's on the phone saying, introduce them to identity politics. All of a sudden, wokeness started taking over, and then from there, I started, I started seeing it get bigger and bigger. And you know what, for me, I didn't think much of it other than these people are weirdos, despite the fact that I remember one night there was, there was a, a, a young black guy who was watching all of this happen, and I overheard him say, y'all are crazy. You're segregating people by race? I don't, have, I don't have anything to do with this. Occupy actually created their organizational structure based around your race. They put all the black people in one group, all the Latinos, all the Asians. Oh yeah, it was, it, and, and I, I was, wonder why it fell apart. <laughs> no wonder, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I can tell you why it fell apart. Uh, in fact, there was, uh, we had video footage. In fact, I think I inv interviewed Tim Poole, who was recording some of this, on the day it fell apart, when um, Bloomberg brought in a bunch of cops and they rousted everybody um, from the park. That's why it fell apart. It fell apart because of the, the uh, apparatus of those elite decided time to get them out and then we had a president also who decided that it was there was not going to be any recourse for the crooks that had ripped people off on Wall without a doubt without a doubt but the, the That's literally the, the occupy was there were fusion centers that, that around the country that were working with local police departments and they rousted everybody that's why it fell apart so that's where the disingenuousness comes in right because he knows the he's cops lying. Mike Bloomberg's cops are not working for trans people. They are not working for black people. They're not working for immigrants. They're working for the corporate elite that they supposedly have a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the thing is like they got the it's it's uh, Tim acting like he's so uh, sh um, sorry that Occupy got away from their noble goals like what like taxing breaking too big to fail banks or taxing corporations, but they never actually get around to those actual goals that they support. They just have gone in the other direction with the culture war that they say got in the uh, way of everything. And this is really po important for people to to um, to absorb because the next two years, this is what we're going to hear. And when we talk about, and I appreciate the caller calling earlier as to the importance of people like talking about Jimmy Dore, they are going to do the exact same thing that Charlie Kirk is doing here. They are going to uh, claim, and, 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 and certainly there is an attempt by corporate America to use, um, to brandish their brands by saying that they're inclusive, et cetera, et cetera. There's no doubt that that's happening. But the fact is, is that what these reactionaries are doing, what the right wing populism is doing, it is it is doing the exact same thing they accuse these corporations of. They're using, they're saying the corporations are our enemies, but then they're using the existence of trans people, of black people, of immigrants as a battering ram. And they're using them in almost the identical way, just on the other side of that coin. Yeah. And so people need to be aware of this when it's deployed. They need to be able to see through this because if you're talking about the 99% and you're not talking about black people or immigrants or brown people or, or trans people or the most marginalized in society, you're not talking about the 99%. That's what you have to understand.